Today, I'm gonna be talking about four things that you should be doing on your drum bus when you're mixing drums. Let's jump into it. Okay guys, so like I said, today I'm gonna show you guys how to actually make your drums nice and punchy in your mix. So the first thing I wanna show you guys is I wanna play you this drum track I have. All right, take a listen. Okay, and that's what it sounds like. But you know what? I feel like we can make it a lot more punchy and a lot more exciting. So that's what I'm gonna show you guys how to do right now. Check it out. Okay guys, so the first thing I like to do is let's open up our mix bus here. And the first thing I wanna do is go to our drum bus here, which is all the way down here. Right here is our drum bus. Now the first thing I always love to do whenever I am mixing drums is I like to do some parallel compression. Now parallel compression you can do on many things. Parallel compression is another word for parallel compression. It's called New York style compression. And it's used on like drums, it's used on vocals, and it's a great thing to use on drums especially to get them punchy. So. And pretty much when you're using parallel compression, you're pretty much hitting that compressor really hard. So we're gonna open up the stock compressor here in Logic. Here we go. And pretty much what we're gonna do is we're really gonna hit this thing hard because I really want that nice punchy drum sound, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the ratio. So let's dial that in. I'm gonna play the track and see where we get here. So check it out. You hear that already? As soon as I dialed up that ratio right there, you started to really get that punch. Here we go. Okay, so I'm using about a 15 to one ratio right there, and that sounds a really good right there. It's a lot of more punch too. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, use our threshold. So let's bring that. You hear that? As soon as I brought that threshold up, it's really bringing it and gives it a lot of punch. Guys, if you're listening on a cell phone or if you're listening on like an iPad, put some headphones in, you'll be able to hear this, all right? Let's continue. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Oh yeah, that's hidden hard. I love that. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a fast attack on this. Oh my gosh, do you hear that? Oh my gosh, that is... That sounds so good. Oh yeah, right there, that attack. Guys, that literally sounds so good. It gives it so much punch to your drums and it sounds amazing. So then, so that is literally how you're gonna use your compressor to use some parallel compression on drums. 
Okay, so the, after I use parallel compression, the next thing I like to do is I actually like to use some saturation. Now, let me walk you through before we actually move on to the saturation. I want to walk you through what I did with the compressor. The compressor, what I did is I used a 15 to 1 ratio. Now, that's pretty high, but for parallel compression, you get a lot of punch that way. With the threshold, I used a 30, I used a minus 35.5 dB. And then for the attack, I used a 77.0. Now, all of those settings are really good for parallel compression. So those are the settings that I used, okay? So now what I wanna do is I wanna move on to the saturation to show you what we can do with that to get these drums even more sounding, more punchy and more great, okay? Okay guys, I just wanna say before we move on, me as a drummer, whenever I'm mixing drums, this is how I like my drums to sound, like super punchy and super dynamic and super fat. That's how I like to mix my drums. But if I'm working like for someone else, like doing another mix for someone else, if they say, oh, I don't want the drums to be so punchy, then that's what I have to do. But whenever I'm mixing for me, I always make my drums super punchy because that's how I like them. So whenever you're mixing, guys, mix the way you want your drums to sound. If you want them to be punchy, follow these tips because they work so good, okay? So what we're gonna do, on, let's move on to the next uh, tip, okay? Okay, guys, the next thing I like to do, like I said, is I like to actually add some saturation. Now, I don't know if you guys have heard of this plugin, but the plugin I like to use for saturation is called um, Head Crusher. And it's by a, a company called Audio Exalt, and it makes this saturation plugin is incredible. It gives your drums some amazing grit and it sounds so good. So what I like to do is with drums, I like to give my drums, my dr sorry, my drums some distortion. And the reason I like to give them some grit is because it just makes your drums stand and pop through the mix so much more. So giving them some grit like distortion and putting a saturation plugin on them just brings them to life and gives them that great dynamic sound, that great punch, and it pops through the mix so well. So what we're gonna do is what we are going to play around with these knobs and see where we can get these drums sounding. So check it out. Yeah, that sounds great. Oh, all right. Just giving them that little grit just brought the drums to life and gave them so much punch and it sounds so good, guys. So whatever you guys do, start using some saturation on your 
drums, guys. I mean, this plugin head crusher is the way to go. Now, this plugin's actually free. You can go online and get it. There is a paid version, but this plugin's actually free. So I do have the paid version, but I thought I would show you guys this version first. So go online, type in Audio Exalt, and this is a free plugin you can get, and it sounds so good. And I use this on my drums all the time, on like every drum mix I do, and it sounds so good. I love this plugin. So next thing I want to do is show you guys how to use some reverb on drums. Okay, guys, so the next thing I like to use is some reverb. Now, the one reverb plugin I like to use on drums is I like to use my um, space saturate, my space um, designer plugin. Now, with any reverb on drums, the number one preset that you always want to use for drums on a reverb is a room reverb. You always want to use a room preset on drums and the reason why you always want to use a room preset is because when you're recording drums you know those big studios that have those giant rooms and the high ceilings those are actually the um where they record the drums and the reason why they actually record drums in such big rooms and high ceilings is because that's how they get the big room sound is literally in giant rooms like that. That's how they get the big drum sounds. It's because they record the room. They use room mics and they record the room. And like, and when you hit the drum, you hit the drum and it shoots into the air and they record that sound that goes into the air. And that's how they get those big, big, huge drum sounds. That's how they do it. So that's why you wanna use a room reverb preset, okay? So what we're gonna do is let's play our drum track and we're gonna actually go through and play around with some presets, room presets until we find the best one. That's another tip. Don't just pick any room preset whenever you're using a reverb. Go through a bunch and see which one fits your mix the best. Okay, so that sounds actually pretty good. I actually like that kind of. But I think what I'm gonna do is play around with a few more to see what else I can use. I actually like that preset right there. It's called Piano Reflection. Now, I actually like it a lot. Now, I have one more tip for you guys, and this is also a reverb tip. Now, when you're using reverb, you also wanna actually EQ your reverb, which means you wanna use a high pass filter and a low pass filter to actually clean the reverb up so that it doesn't get out of like hand. So lucky for me, this space designer uh, reverb actually comes with a built-in EQ. If you click right up here, you can see that it has an EQ chart now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the drums again and I'm gonna actually use a high pass filter and a low pass filter to actually bring those in just to control it a little bit more.
Okay, and that's awesome, guys. That is literally what I like to do with the reverb. Now, I almost forgot, I actually have one more tip I like to actually do on drums, and this tip is actually my favorite tip I actually do on drums every time, but it's something I do at the end of my mixes when I'm getting ready to actually automate my mixes, like use automation. And this tip is an automation tip. Now, if you haven't seen my last video on automation I did last week, go check that video out. I'll leave a link to that video in my description down below. So go check that video out. It's a great video. I automated guitars. So go check it out. It's awesome. Um, oh, and leave a like on it too, guys. Um, so this video I want to show you guys is um, how to actually use automation to actually make your drums more dynamic, okay? Okay, guys, now, when I'm using automation on drums, I actually don't use automation throughout the entire drum like tracks. I don't use it all the way through. What I pretty much do is I go through and what I actually do is pick certain drum sounds or certain parts of the mix that I just want to automate. And then I use automation on those certain parts. Because the thing is, if you use your automation throughout the entire mix, your whole mix is going to sound the same. But what I do is I go through the song throughout the mix and I pick the places where I want to use automation so I can actually make the mix more exciting. So what I'm going to do is close my mixer here. And if you if I zoom out here and I show you hold on this part right here. So you see this part right here that's highlighted that I just highlighted. I'm actually going to use automation on that part. And the reason why I'm going to use automation right there is because that part of the song is a build up. If you actually take a listen to it. So if I scoop back a little bit, take a listen to when it gets to this part right here. Hang on. Just take a loop off here. Now take a listen. You hear that? It's a build up with a kick drum and a tom, a low tom, like a floor tom. So that's where I'm going to use it, the automation to actually build the song up. And the reason why is because it's going into a more full of a drum kit. Because if you listen to this part here, it's not that exciting. But then we get to this part. That could just be like boom, 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 and build up, right? Because when we get to this part over here, it's more full, more drum sound. Right? So that's where I'm going to put the automation right here. Let me show you how to do that right now. Okay guys, so like I said, right now I'm going to show you guys how to use automation on your drums. Now, I'm going to show you this part right here is going to be where I use the automation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up our automation line here. Here we go. And this is the spot where I'm going to use it. So take a listen. What I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is make two dots. So I'm going to make a dot here at the beginning. And I'm going to make another dot right next to it there. So now we have our two dots. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into our tool selection here and I'm going to grab automation selective tool. So now what I want to do is take this second dot that I made and actually click on it and I'm going to drag it up. So take a look. So we're going to take it and we're going to drag it up here. And we're going to go up to about 6 dB, which is right there. Okay, so now that we have our automation here, what we're going to do is we're going to zoom back out for a minute here. Now, as you can see, this part right down here where the marker is, is not the chorus, okay? This is the verse of the song. Now, when it gets to this part of the song, which is right here where the automation starts, that's the build up into the chorus. And then when you get here, this is the chorus of the song. So the reason I started the automation here is because I wanted it, the drums to build up into the chorus. So 
when we play this track, what I want you to do is watch, watch my drum fader, okay? Which is right here. And I want you to actually pay attention to what it does, okay? It's gonna get louder, the drums are gonna get louder, and it's gonna sound great. Take a listen. You hear that? If you guys can't hear what I'm doing, like I said, if you're listening on an iPhone or you listen on an iPad, put some headphones in, you'll be able to hear. So take a listen again. Once we get here, the volume's gonna build in to the chorus. Take a listen. You hear that? So literally watch this fader right down here. It shoots up just a little bit. I'm gonna play it again and watch this fader, how it goes up. You see? This is how dynamics work in music, is you're gonna be using automation to automate your drums. Okay guys, so I hope these drum tips helped you guys today, and I hope they helped you to actually get your drums to sound nice and punchy in your mix. Another way to actually get your drums to sound nice and punchy too, is to use drum samples. Now, if, you, if you're using MIDI drums like me, a great way to actually get your drums to actually sound more real is to use drum samples. And a, and a great drum sample plugin to use is called Trigger. If you don't have Trigger, then you can use another plugin like um, Easy Drummer, which is another great drum plugin. So guys, literally these drum tips I showed you guys today, try them for yourself. They make your drums sound amazing, like the parallel compression, that's gonna really bring some dynamics and really bring some punch to your drums. Using a distortion, like a saturation plugin on your drums, that's gonna really give it some grit and really make them pop too. Using reverb, literally that's gonna give your drums some depth. So make sure you're using a room reverb though. And guys, using automation for the last one. So these tips really, really help guys and make sure you take them and you use them on your drums, in your drum tracks, in your home studios because I know they're going to help you. All right, guys, I just wanna say we are almost to 600 subscribers, guys. We just hit 571. We're so close to 600 and I know we can get there. Guys, I love making this content for you guys. You guys are have been so incredible with all your support. Thank you so much and thank you for all your support for watching. Oh, and guys, one more thing before we end the video. I just wanna say, if you guys are not following me on my other social medias, like my Facebook page and my Twitter account and my Instagram, go over and follow me on my Twitter, my Instagram, and my Facebook page. On there, I post behind the scenes stuff and you guys actually get a heads up of what video is actually coming out during that week. So you guys could actually know what video is coming out like a week before or like a few days before, before I actually post. I post every Friday. So if you guys wanna know on a Monday what video I'm actually posting that for that week, then you know what? Go on my Facebook page, follow me, Instagram and Twitter, and you guys will know right away, okay? So like I said, follow me on all my social medias and we can stay in contact. And it's another way for you guys to actually DM me too. Also, if you guys have Discord, then literally follow me on Discord because literally that's a place where you guys can actually talk and chat with me on there with whatever you want. I want to actually engage with you guys a lot more. So I'll put my Discord in the description down below. If you have Discord, follow me on there and we can chat. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned a lot about what you should be doing on your drums to making them sound nice and punchy in your mix and I hope you learned a lot about these four tips. Use these four tips in your mix on your drum bus because they really help. And as you can hear throughout the video, that they make your drums sound super punchy and you'll get a much better drum sound, guys, okay?
So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, guys. If you love this channel and you love the content I'm making, be sure to subscribe so you never miss a thing. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Keep making great music. See you guys next time.